Hi guys, welcome back to my vlogs. It's been a long time since we last met. This time around, I'm back with a little different content. Different in the sense, today we are going to speak in detail about a very popular movie in the late times, Kantaram. So let's move in. Kantara for me was an amazing theatre experience owing to its top notch visuals, resounding soundtracks, thrilling action sequences, and mind blowing climax. There was immense hype built around the movie through word of mouth and especially after the controversy behind its title track, Varaharubam. But the movie opened to strictly average reviews post its OTT release earlier this week. I attribute this to certain major reasons. The inability to recreate a similar theatre experience was a major drawback for the makers. The missing Varaharubam song rubbed salt to the wounds. Comedy and dialogues were another key engaging factors in the theatre. The movie is made in Kunda Kannada, which is a dialect very different from the widely spoken Kannada. And the pace at which dialogues are delivered makes it difficult to track it from the subtitles, which means you either end up losing the dialogues or the visuals. As an average viewer, I also came out to experience the peripheral storyline of a villager saving his village from an evil landlord. But my curiosity to explore the different aspects of the storyline opened up numerous intricacies that underlay beneath the main plot. If you have not watched the movie yet, head to Prime and watch it right away and then come back to see the rest of the video as there are major spoilers ahead. But a rewatch after learning about the theory is definitely going to be worth it. Let's first analyze the storyline from the point of view of the protagonist Shiva, who is an angry village youngster whose father hails from a Bhutanataka family but is into minor smuggling and hunting to make his living. He works for a local landlord whose business is a threat once a new forest officer arrives. They have frequent hustles in between, but at the end, it's the landlord himself who turns out to be the bad guy who in turn get killed by Shiva. Let's try understanding the various elements in the movie. The first step to which is understanding what is Bhuta and Bhuta Radhane. The movie is set in a fictional village in Tulunad, which has a predominant Dravidian culture. Even though it's quite difficult in a contemporary scenario to dissimulate Dravidian and Vedic cultures, in a period before the Christ, they existed as extremely different entities. Contrary to the Vedic concept of two worlds, there exists three worlds in the Tulunadu concept. The Gramya, where the humans settle with their livelihood, the Aranya, which is a forest, and finally the Bhutaloga, which is the world of spirits. Each of these coexisting in a certain equilibrium, which, if disturbed, tries to restore itself back through counteractions. A king is the guardian of the Gramya, and Brahmaru is the guardian of the other two worlds. The king offers regular worship to the Brahmaru to seek his help in maintaining this harmony between the three worlds. This is the essence of the first part of the movie, where the king comes seeking the help of Panchurli, one of the most prominent devas, who in return bestows upon the king the responsibility of maintaining the balance between these worlds. With this context, let's understand the movie a step ahead. Whenever there is a clear breach of boundaries, there has been counteractions from the Deva which has resulted in the death of whoever has tried to breach it. Key to opening the storyline lies in understanding the story of Panchurli. Panchurli's legend says that it was a piglet adopted by go goddess Parvati which when taken to Kailasa started destroying the gardens there and was banished to earth by god Shiva with the responsibility of guarding the forest and its treasures. The movie also portrays Panjurli as a complacent Deva. The complacency of Panjurli is depicted with the boar shying away from Shiva when he approaches it and Guruva taking new aggressive steps against the evil landlord. Then who is the executioner of Panjurli? That's where Guliga's legend comes in. Guliga was born out of a stone which Parvati found in a pile of ash. Shiva was not keen in keeping Guliga in Kailasa and sent him to Vaikunta, where out of irresistible hunger, he drank the entire lake and started eating fishes in Vaikunta. Lord Vishnu punished and sent him to the earth, where he took birth prematurely tearing out of his mother's womb and tried eating the sun. Lord Vishnu had to finally quench his hunger by giving his little finger. The ferocious Guliga was blessed with peace and made the Kshetra Paraga by Jaladurga goddess who in turn once resolved the fierce conflict between Panjurli and Guliga, instructing them both to keep each other's back and to live like siblings. This is where my theory of Shiva being possessed by Guliga all along kicks in. His fondness for fish, aggressive and angry nature are all signs of this. Now, relooking the movie from Panjurli's point of view, it always knew about any imminent harm to the forest. 
it had tried stopping shiva on multiple occasions whenever he tried to pose threat to the balance in the ecosystem coming in his nightmares and hallucinations during tree felling and hunting this also signals that panchuli being aware about the fact that the forest was under threat was trying to reach out to guliga the degree of guliga's influence grows more as the movie progresses when finally before the climax shiva receives enlightenment it has to be believed that shiva gets killed by the goons and then guliga completely takes over in the climax it hands over the responsibility of the forest to murali the forest officer prior to vanishing into the forest it's also shown that shiva's son might take up his legacy going forward chip shetty has strictly shied away from spoon feeding the storyline to the viewers subtly adding it in the action packed screenplay i wish team kantra all the good luck in the national awards kantra definitely has come a long way in motivating a lot of movie makers to come up with subjects viewed around our rich her- heritage and cultural diversity i hope all of you thoroughly enjoy the movie and even more after my theories stay tuned for more content until then bye bye